Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Shenmue. Let's instantly teleport to work and get the day started. Today, we are going to be tasked with getting third place in the race. Right in the middle, guys. Think I can pull it off? I bet I can. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. Time for a daily warm-up race. You all do your best now. Yeah. yeah. Like always, three laps to the finish. Everybody ready? Yeah. yeah. On your mark, almost time to go. I like this rock music that plays while we're getting ready to race. Really gets you pumped up, right? Ready. Here we go! One thing that does suck about this, and I wish it was different, is that, like, you don't get to use the number forklift that you got in the race the previous day. Like, if you get first place, I feel like you should have forklift number one the next day. That should be one of the prizes of winning. That would make it, like, way better in my opinion. It's a small thing, but, you know, I earned that number one forklift. I guess in this case I'd have number two, but, yeah. Alright, number three. Urgh. I'm gonna try and run him off the road here. Urgh. Oh no, he cut me off. He cut me off big time, guys. So that's what can happen when you start dicking around on the racetrack. <laughs> These guys will just like slam you into a corner and you will come to a dead stop. Only the first lap though, so we got plenty of time to make it up. Not a huge deal. Luckily, my forklift is just intrinsically faster than theirs, so. Ooh, I cut that real close. Mad skills, guys. Mad skills. Hi, Mark. He's just standing there without a safety hat, without anything. He can get run over by a forklift. It would probably be the end of his life. You know what? Now I'm bringing out the tongs. Now it's all messed up. Now y'all messed up. The game just got serious. I really wish I could swivel the camera around. Like, I'm trying to do that right now, but I don't think there's any way to do that. Ugh, no matter. Alright, so I just want to stay behind this guy. And just keep an eye out for the third place guy. Well, the fourth place guy coming up from behind me. He's trying to get third place, but I'm not going to let him, goddammit. Hurry up, dude. This is where it feels wrong. You have to, like, slow yourself down. <laughs> You have to be crappy, but it's worth it to complete the collection. This is how it's always been. This is how it must remain, guys. It has been written. It has been written in Shenmue lore that Ryo has a complete forklift collection. Last lap. This is where it gets real serious. This is where it really counts. Part of me wants to turn around up here and see how close the next guy is, but that's like a terrible idea. <laughs> Probably the worst idea. I'm just gonna stick behind this guy. You know guys, I make this race look easy because like I've done it so many times and I know how it works, but the first couple times you do this, it is honestly pretty difficult. Like the first time I ever played this game, I don't think I got first place even once. I want to say the best I did was, like, maybe second place. I don't know. It's hard to remember specifics, but I remember it being really hard. Finish. Third place. Did it. Oh, man. So close. You almost had it. Here's your prize. Not really. <laughs> Thanks. It's time for work. Let's get cracking. Yeah, buddy. I love Mark. He's such a nice guy. I'm ready. Take this cargo to warehouse number 18. Here's the route map. Today's quote is written on the map. No problem. Okay, get to it then. Rightio. Work day number three, guys. So where are we at here? Okay, we're out here by warehouse number 11, which is close to 8 kind of the opposite of the route we did yesterday. We're starting from over here. Yesterday we were going to warehouse number three, which is right up there. And again, we have a choice about which way to go. I think in this case, it's definitely better to just take the straightaway. 
because we come out of that exit right there. Like, we have to come out of that exit. And then we swing around. Ooh, that was bad. And warehouse number 18 should be this guy right here. Yeah. So, like... Not a terribly difficult route. A couple different ways to do it, but... I feel like there's one clearly better way compared to yesterday. And, uh... You can kind of see how the days just kind of keep, like, ramping up in difficulty little by little in terms of the route you take and the length of the route. But it hasn't gotten that bad yet. The worst part is still all these douchebags walking around. Actually, the hard part of this one is getting into a good position to pick these crates up when you get back in here. Because they're in kind of a... Kind of a crappy position. It's hard to maneuver the forklift around as soon as you get around that corner. But no matter. What was my quota today? Eight crates. We should be able to crush that. I think it's eight on most days. And, you know, it's definitely a deliberate design thing if you think about how, like... You get a daily raise, so you get more yen per crate. But they kind of balance that out by making it more difficult to get that many crates. Like, the first day we finished all the crates, no problem whatsoever. And then, kind of like from every day there on after, it becomes more and more difficult to match that number of crates. So... I guess when I think about it that way, the daily raises kind of make sense. Because, depending on your routes, you might not be able to do as many crates as you did the previous day, which means you wouldn't be making as much money. So they have to give you a raise to make sure that, you, that you're uh, making the same amount of money, I guess. It's kind of like when you're working at a place and you're hourly, and then you switch to a salary position, and it's supposed to be like a bonus and a promotion and a raise, but you actually end up making less money. Because sometimes you're working more hours, but you're not getting overtime anymore. You're just getting that flat salary rate. It's not always a good thing. That can happen, guys. It has happened to me before. Work life is complicated. I think Ryo may have made a mistake by entering the workforce so soon in his life. Didn't even finish high school. I wonder if it was really like that in the 80s. I wasn't on the job force in the 80s, but <laughs> I wonder how lax they were with things like high school diplomas and things like that. Like these days, everybody gets like a full on freaking background check and drug screen run on them. So like, you know everything about everybody who applied because it's just like standard procedure. And if you don't at least have a high school diploma, you may as well go fuck yourself because you're not getting hired anywhere. But like in the 80s, I wonder if they were just like, do you have a high school diploma? You do? Good. And like, you didn't even have to prove it. Or like, maybe they didn't even ask about it. I guess it also depends on where you're trying to work, right? First person forklifting! Woo! I feel like there's more traffic than usual today. More people just getting all up in my grill. I may forsake that last spot there in the corner, because it's going to be kind of a pain in the ass to get it wedged in there. And I'm fairly certain we are not going to need that space anyway. Who's that big fat businessman? Fat for a Japanese guy. Pretty normal for an American. And I say that as a fat American, so don't get offended. <laughs> Uh, I guess you can get offended if you want. That is your right. As a, as a fat American, it is your right to be offended. All of you need to get the hell out of my face right now. Oh, okay, this guy just materialized in front of me like a fucking X-Man. Oh. oh, you guys are assholes. Get out of my face! Ugh. A little bit of slowdown right there. That's what it's like all the time on the Dreamcast version. <laughs> Much as I love the Dreamcast version, guys, it's pretty awesome having this release right here. I will say. I miss the Dreamcast button prompts. For, like, the QTEs. But that's mostly, like, my fault, because, like I said, they're burned into my brain. 
but having this thing running on modern consoles is fantastic. I just hope that they get the save transfer feature fixed, assuming it is actually broke. I haven't found out for myself yet, but if that's not working exactly right, I would really like it to, because I feel like the save transfer is one of the coolest things about this game. And it really highlighted, like, like how uh, ambitious Shenmue was back in the day. That's one of the major things that drew me to it, I feel, is, like, it, it became pretty obvious that this wasn't a self-contained game. It was meant to be just an introductory chapter to a much bigger thing. And, uh, I hope you don't consider that a spoiler. I'm not talking, like, specifics here, but it's no... It's no secret that Shenmue 2 exists, and Shenmue 3 is being made right now. And I'd never really played a series that had that kind of continuity between games before. Like, it's more than... Shenmue 2 is more than a sequel to this game. It's a direct continuation. And being able to transfer your save file feels like a really big part of that to me. And the thing that sucks is I couldn't actually do that back in the day, because... Shenmue 2 actually never came out in the North American region on Dreamcast. By the time Shenmue 2 was ready, guys, the Dreamcast was pretty much uh, dead, failed, discontinued, and Shenmue 2 was a casualty of that because um, they just didn't think it was worth releasing it. Shenmue 1 sadly didn't turn them a profit, even though it sold really well. That's a common misconception about Shenmue 1, guys. People are like, well, nobody played it. Nobody bought it. It sold over a million copies, okay? I think the, the exact figure was like 1.2 million or something, which is a lot of copies of a game. Like, a lot of games would give their left nut to sell that many copies. And that's the God's honest truth. The problem is that this game cost like 70 million freaking dollars to make, and there was just no way they were going to recoup that budget. So by the time the Dreamcast died and Shenmue 2 came along, they didn't actually release it for the Dreamcast. I'll continue this later. It is now lunchtime. Lunchtime, eh? Hello, fellow working men. I don't know why I love this so much. Just this thought of, like, eating lunch with your co-workers. Oh, that's the Zomi's music. Let me take a picture of you two. No, that's okay. Don't be shy. Stand there. Here we go. Both of you get in closer. Smile. What the hell are you two doing here? <laughs> that's it. Here goes. Which do you want? Yo. Okay, so there's really no winning this, guys. Because... Whichever one you picked, Nozomi's going to get the other one. So, I guess, I think the one that makes her happier is going for the one on the right, though. Oh, uh, this one. Okay, this one's yours, and this one's Nozomi's. They're keepsakes. What's with her? I, I'm going to Canada. What? I took a while to decide, but... Hey, if it's what you've decided, it's what you've decided. Ryo, don't do anything stupid. <laughs> of course I won't. <laughs> I'll always treasure this. Ryo, take care of yours too. I will. I'll come back when I'm on vacation. Sure. Bye then, Ryo. She's really leaving, guys. Nozomi. She's really doing it. Well, we got a photo of Nozomi. Which is a really nice keepsake. Yeah, the reason I say that there's really no winning that is because, like, if we take the one where we're closer together, like, that, I think that makes her happy, but then she gets the one where we're farther apart, so she gets the raw end of the deal. If you take the one where we are far apart, then she gets sad that we didn't want the one where we're close together. I don't know why we couldn't just take another picture and have two good ones, but whatever. 
Mark, have you seen any of the Mad Angels? No, sure haven't. All right. Too bad. Hitoshi, Ryo, is your lunch big enough for you? Yeah, it's plenty. You can have half of mine if you want. Thanks, but I got a small appetite, so sometimes I can't finish it, you know? Is that so? That's a very nice offer. Thanks, Satoshi. Hey, Tiyoshi. Hey, Ryo. Are you hiding something from me, man? No. You kind of got that look, you know, like you're hiding something. Well, I'm not. Really? You sure? Well, you be sure to let me know if something's up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just love these guys so much, guys. It's like, we never saw it happen, but we got like super close to them, you know? Excuse me. Yeah? Have you seen the Mad Angels around? I don't know anything about them. Ask the foreman. Yes. Well, I would love to, but I can never find the damn guy. Our boss. Whose name is Riozo, I think? Which is a cool-ass name. Um, hey. Oh, that's all you gotta say? You don't want to talk? Fine. I don't want to talk to you either. Hisakusa. Will. Have you ever seen any of the Mad Angels? Mad? Well, I don't think I've ever seen them. Sorry, I have no idea. I see. Okay, well it wasn't helpful, but she did say something different. <laughs> so, yay for that. Oh, uh, let's see if he's in the office. I doubt it. I honestly don't know where he hangs out. I think he just kind of walks around all the time. Yeah. Excuse me. What is it? Have you ever seen any members of the Mad Angels? The Mad... Hmm... I don't know anything about them. Is that so? Thank you very much. Okay. I'm not sure I ever noticed, but we have a jukebox in here, too. I guess it makes sense putting the jukebox in the break room, right? Like... It's a good thing to have. I don't know who would ever just hang out in here and listen to that music, though. Like, if you're gonna do that, just do it in the, uh, lounge. And, like, play some darts or something, you know? That's the way I see it. Let's just run around and see if we can find the foreman. I think he might actually have, like, a notebook entry for us today, maybe? Who's Goro? Goro. Yo, bro! Have you seen any of the mad angels around? Whoa, bro! Like I said, don't say that name out loud! You know, right? Tell me. Ah, bro! Well, I ain't got no choice, I guess. Motorcycles. They ride around the harbor at night. At night, huh? Hmm. Yeah, we may have actually jumped the gun on getting that information by asking so diligently yesterday. Because, um... I think we're supposed to get that info for something tonight. But I guess we got it a little early. Which is fine. Anyways. What was I saying earlier? Yeah, so the original release of Shenmue 2 never came out in North America on the Dreamcast, guys. It did come out in Japan and the European regions. You know, like England and all those places. Oh, is that the boss? Yeah, that might be him. Oi. Excuse me. I'll sign him. Can I help you? Have you seen any of the Mad Angels members lately? The Mad Angels? I only hear all kinds of bad rumors about them. Them punks are nothing but trouble. When was that? Oh, round about last week, I'd say. On the day I had to work overtime. They were riding around on motorcycles. Motorcycles? Mm-hmm. It was noisy as hell. Anyway, after sunset, You'd best get on home before they come back. Okay. Thank you for that. Everybody's mentioning motorcycles, guys. Kind of makes me wonder. Maybe I should go practice my hang-on. <laughs> so Shenmue 2 did end up coming out in America a couple years later on the original Xbox, but obviously you can't transfer a save file between Dreamcast and Xbox. But what a lot of people did including myself, was import the European version of Shenmue 2 because 
It actually came with the Japanese language track, but English subtitles, unlike the Japanese version, which just had regular Japanese subtitles. So that was the way that we figured out to play the game back in the day. And we had to play the Japanese version with, you know, that voice acting and everything. And I kind of ended up falling in love with that version. Um, the bad news there... Time to go back to back work. To work. Warehouse number 18. Okay. Right. So, the bad news with using the European version on the Dreamcast was that the save transfer still wasn't compatible from the North American version of the first game. And there was a way to edit the file so that you could do it. You had to actually get the file onto your PC somehow, and they had these devices called Dex Drives, and they were basically like Dreamcast memory cards, but they also had a USB output. And uh, you could get the save file onto your PC using that method. And then you could use a hex editor to edit the save file and make it transferable so that you could carry your save file over. And this was like, this was important enough to people that like everybody sat down and figured this out. And a lot of people did it. Um, I never had a dex drive though because I could never find one. So actually what I did was I went to the trouble of importing the European version of Shenmue 1 for Dreamcast, that I had the European version of both 1 and 2, and then you just had to use a boot disk to actually make the games play on your North American console. And then once I did that, I could play Shenmue 1 in European and directly transfer my save file over to the Shenmue 2 version. And uh, if all that sounds like a huge pain in the ass, it's because it was but that is literally how much I loved this game back in the day. I had no qualms doing that, and I got a lot of joy out of transferring my save over and keeping all my move progress and all my money because I totally took advantage of the glitch that I talked about yesterday. Well, it's not even really a glitch, but, you know, the, uh, the exploit, let's call it. And I made tons of money, and I bought tons of capsule toys, and I transferred everything over and had a great time in Shenmue 2. And sadly, it, you know, the whole Shenmue 3 situation is very different from the way that Shenmue used to be developed. You know, it's still being made by Yu Suzuki, but back in the day, Yu Suzuki worked directly for Sega. His team was called AM2, and Shenmue remains a Sega property. Uh, but these days, I shouldn't have brought my forklift things up. Uh, these days, Yu Suzuki doesn't work for Sega anymore. He has his own company that he formed called Eastnet, YSnet. YS for Yu Suzuki. <laughs> and it's kind of a miracle that he's actually still allowed to make Shenmue 3. I mean, I'm not privy to the legal details behind it, but, you know, he got permission from Sega. He's making Shenmue 3, but it's a very different kind of game because the primary development platform is the PC. You know, the Dreamcast isn't a thing anymore. And it doesn't sound like they prepared ahead to support a save transfer feature between the PC version of this game and Shenmue 3, or the PS4 version for that matter, because Shenmue 3 is only being made for the PC and the PS4. Now, there is an Xbox One version of the HD ports of this game, but... Um, no Xbox One version of Shenmue 3, which some people are pissed off about, but honestly, that's happening because Sony is sort of involved in some of the financial aspects of Shenmue 3. They're definitely involved in like the publishing of the PS4 version, and they may have developed, they may have contributed some development funds. It's it's kind of unclear. They don't really talk about the the like the specifics of those financials because why would they? So. Some people are pissed off about that, but I think the thing that upsets me the most is that they have not announced the ability to transfer your save from Shenmue 2 to Shenmue 3. And the reason that's important is, like I talked about, just that sense of continuity, that sense of ambition, and all the different things, all the different ways that Shenmue was looking ahead and kind of playing the long game. It's not immediately obvious when you, you know, when you start playing this game and you get into... Uh, like the first, I'd say like the first half of this game, but I feel like by the time you get to this point, you kind of start to realize like, there's a lot going on in this story. 
that they haven't even touched on yet. There's some mystical aspects. There's some kind of thing going on in China. There's like some destiny angle at play. We've seen this character, this girl, a bunch of times. And we have no idea who she is or how she factors into the story. But I know that I'm close to the end of this game because it's only three discs long. And we haven't even seen Landy since the beginning of the game. So like, there's got to be way more to this than meets the eye, right? And bringing your save along with you just kind of facilitates that whole idea of feeling like you're on this huge epic journey. This huge journey that no other video game has attempted before. And man, that feeling was absolutely incredible. And I lied, and I'm sticking this crate here in the corner. I don't know why. It just seemed like the right thing to do right there. Now I'm stuck here. Okay, we're good. Man, I've been babbling a lot about the history of Shenmue. You know, it's it's a big thing. And it's not something I've really touched on yet in this Let's Play, but this seems like a good time to do it because, yeah, I'll admit, there's not much to talk about when you're just moving crates back and forth. It is kind of repetitive. I like For me, the player, it's a lot of fun. I love doing this. It's probably not the most exciting thing to watch after a certain point. So if I don't have things to talk about, I'll just cut it out. But I figure why not use this time to talk about the history of Shenmue? Because it's really fascinating to me. And I don't think I impressed upon you guys enough how insane it was when the Kickstarter got announced back in 2015 at E3. It's the kind of thing where, like, there hadn't been a proper Shenmue release since, uh... Oh, I think the Xbox version of Shenmue 2 came out in 2002, maybe? 2002, 2003? And by the way, that's not a very popular release of the game. I mean, it's, it's all that most people had. You know, it came out here with the English dub. And it's it came with a movie of Shenmue 1 that kind of explained the backstory. But to be honest with you guys, the audience of the original Xbox wasn't really the same audience of Shenmue. It was kind of a doomed effort. And, you know, to this day, I applaud Microsoft for being the only ones who actually, like, took a chance on Shenmue and put it on their system. But it just didn't work out because that wasn't the kind of game that Xbox players were looking for back in the day. If you remember the launch of the original Xbox and the way they marketed that platform, it was very much about, you know, extreme gaming. It was about Halo and Brute Force and all these, like, hardcore games and Shenmue just didn't really have an audience there, so that version really didn't do very well either, and that kind of sealed Shenmue's fate. Get the hell out of my way! There's so many people! Oh my god. So, at some point, they actually did announce a new Shenmue game called Shenmue Online. I want to say that happened in, like, 2000... 7? 2008? Maybe a little earlier than that. These dates are all wrong, guys. I didn't, like, brush up on it. Just talking out of my ass from memory here. But Shenmue Online was supposed to be an MMO title set in the Shenmue universe. And I guess the idea was that, you know, MMOs were taking off in a huge way back then because of the success of World of Warcraft. And... Oh, I thought the next one was down. That's okay. I guess the idea was that, like, they could build this Shenmue MMO and it would have continuous income from a monthly subscription so that, like, even if, like, not a lot of people played it, it would still have steady income and eventually it would have to eclipse its budget, right? Like, the profit fr from it would have to be something that would eclipse the budget. So, like, they kind of wanted to turn Shenmue into a platform rather than... Uh, an episodic game series. Episodic is probably not the right term, but you know what I mean. So, I suppose, in a way, that was a good idea because they could just keep adding story elements onto it and keep getting in those monthly subscriptions. But ultimately, I guess they realized that Shenmue is not meant to be an MMO and the format didn't really work. And I guess even building it as an MMO, it was just getting way too expensive. And ultimately, they just kind of quietly canceled that project, and it never happened. And that was the last word we heard about Shenmue from Sega for a long, 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 long time. Everybody thought that the series was dead. 
We thought that there was no chance in hell it would ever come back. We thought that Shenmue 2 was going to be the last game, and we would never get to see how the story ends. And then E3 2015 happened. And it was the most amazing thing, guys. I think that's the most excited I have ever been in my entire adult life. I can't even explain the feeling of just being there watching this thing happen in real time because I was watching the Sony press conference when it got announced and like before you saw what was going on the main Shenmue theme song kicked in and it was like it was like I, I, I don't have the words guys I, I was literally like just jumping around my apartment <laughs> like doing backflips and shit just like losing my mind because it seemed like something that was so impossible and then like that Shenmue music kicked in and Yu Suzuki shows up on stage and he's like everywhere I go people are asking me like where's Shenmue 3 where's Shenmue 3 when's the story gonna wrap up and he's like I never had the opportunity because it just didn't work out from a business perspective it wasn't it wasn't viable but now it's 2015 and Kickstarter's a thing. And if there's no company out there that wants to like 100% back Shenmue 3 developments, then maybe you guys will. If you actually want it bad enough, here's a Kickstarter. You know, show me, uh, show me how much you want this. And while Shenmue 3 did not meet all of its stretch goals because it had stretch goals up until like the 15 million mark, I think, um, it it became the most quickly funded video game title of all time on Kickstarter because the minimum goal was $2 million to actually start the project and then there were stretch goals all the way up to like 10 or 15 million or something like that and uh, it reached its 2 million donation mark in like I want to say like 2 or 3 hours and it just shattered the old record uh, um, it's not the most funded game of all time like there are games that have received more like actual you know dollar amounts but it was the most quickly funded so ooh finished for the day i've been talking for this entire work day <laughs> and yeah it was just the most incredible thing guys okay good job here's today's pay thanks you met quota son so starting tomorrow You'll get a 50 yen raise. Oh, yeah. That'll be 450 yen per crate. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so now can I just turn around and go talk to him? He's probably not even going to be in here now. Yep, he vanished. <laughs> this guy kind of has an interesting backstory too, guys. His uh, Shenmue passport biography talked about how he actually just got transferred to this working location very recently. And he's always in a grumpy mood because he misses his wife and kids because he had to like move away from them to do this job. Mark, have you seen any of the Mad Angels? No, sure haven't. All right. That was weird how we kept walking. Um... So apparently, Ryozo, our boss, actually, like, he lives in another prefecture in Japan, but he moved, well, he has to move here, like, during the week just to do this job, because he got transferred against his will, but he can't quit. So he never gets to see his wife and his kids because he's here all the time, but over the weekend, he gets to go home and see them just over the weekend. So, like, he's always in a good mood when Friday comes because that's when he gets to leave and go see his family again. But then during the week, he's always in a shitty mood. And, uh, again, it's the kind of thing where the game never really tells you anything about that, but the backstory is out there if you go and track it down. <laughs> Which I don't really agree with that style of game storytelling, but, again, 20 years ago, new style of game development. It's just, uh, it's another example of how much detail they did put into this game during development. Tom. Hi, Dio. I've got something to ask you. Do you know where the Mad Angels hang out? I don't know. Ryo, I heard a rumor that you are going after the Mad Angels. I've got my reasons. Trust me. No, man. Do not go and get mixed up with them. 
If you know anything about them, please, Tom, you've got to tell me. Sorry, but I don't know, man. Really? Hmm. All right, Tom. I'll take your word for it. I gotta tell you guys, I don't think we can really do anything here until nighttime hits. Excuse me. Eh? What is it, youngin? Do you happen to know where the Mad Angels hang out? Why are you looking for them? I hear you've been getting yourself in all sorts of trouble. I really need to know where they are. If you know, please tell me. All right, already. Come back here at night. Here? They always gather around here at night. At night? I understand. Thank you. Don't go doing nothing reckless, you hear? Right, right, right. Yes, yeah, so we have to come back here at nighttime, guys. But in the meantime, let's check for some new tapes. I want new music tapes. It is Wednesday, so maybe they rotated out today. They still haven't. Jeez, when is that gonna happen? I don't know. 100 yen per play. Why not play one? Well, if I can't listen to tapes, I'll listen to this, goddammit. Let's see, what's a good track, guys? Harbor Beats, Flower Girl. How about some dandy old man? That sounds upbeat. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna burn these machines to I the ground. These. Maybe just one. This music is quite dandy, isn't it? Oh, come on. This again? Garbage. Maybe I should get another. I have to get at least one unique toy. I have to. What? This again? Wow. Sure are being jerks about it. Maybe I should get another. Come on, baby, come on. Hit me with something good, I beg you. What the hell is that? This is cool. Okay. I'll take whatever this weird thing is. Opa, Opa. Maybe I should get another. Now we go until the next dupe, which is probably going to be the very next one. <laughs> with my luck. What the hell, guys? It's the same one. Oh my god, the Bins Beans. They won't leave me alone. I'm being buried in Bins Beans. Maybe I should get another. No, fuck off. Nah, not today. Stupid ass. Goddamn. Bins beans. I love these. So this one's all about vehicles and Maybe whatnot. Just one. Which I don't care about at all, but let's grab some just to get like some unique toys. Are you kidding me? What? This again? Why? What the fuck? What did I do to deserve this? What did I do? Somebody tell me. I should try again. Wasting all my damn money. This is cool. Okay. Got a little pink car. Coop 3. Maybe I should get another. I'll take it. I do like the color pink. It's a hot color, guys. I used to have a pink Game Boy. Game Boy Advance SP. I love that thing. It was great. Really? It's the same one. Okay. Yeah, I get it. I get the message. I'll just go fuck myself. Maybe I should get another. No. I'll pass. Alright. Let's try this machine. I love these. 
I should buy one. I have to imagine we'll get a dupe right away out of this one because I've bought so many of these uncharacteristically. It's the same one. Yeah. I should try again. No, thank you. I'm good. Changed my mind. I give up. How many of these do we even have? If we look at our collection, there's still so many that we don't have, guys. So many empty slots in here. But <laughs> the game is just just dunking on us today. It's so mean. Okay. It is officially nighttime. Long time no see. Charlie. This is the guy who's been sniffing around us like a dog? Looks like we're gonna have to run this stray off now. I'm gonna get him. <laughs> yes! That was fucking awesome. All right, Charlie, get back here. I'm gonna find another soccer ball and kick it right into your face. I'll give you pain. Oh shit! Whoa! Now. Oh Jesus! Okay, you gotta pick the right one there. And there. If you fail either of those, you fail the whole QTE, I'm pretty sure. I caught up to you, you piece of shit. Get back here. If you guys don't remember, this is the guy who we found in the tattoo parlor. Smooth move. You ain't so bad, punk. Why you? But your time's up. You wish! No one takes on the mad angels in this harbor and lives to tell about it. It's the bottom of the sea for you. Get him! Seems I blundered into another trap. Well, okay. <laughs> Down with you. Ooh. Okay. Let's try something, guys. Not working. Not working. There we go. Oh, I didn't land the, the, the strike, though. It's it's hard to land, guys. You have to be real quick about it. Oh, man. There it is. There it is. That's the Shadow Blade. Oh, it's so cool. You sit down there. Cool. All right, calm down. Stab armor. Oh, <laughs> stabbing all the armor. What's up? Yeah, my face, bitch. Break your neck open. Think I'm playing? I'm trying to do a simple elbow assault right now. There. <laughs> I don't know why that was so hard. Jesus. You little brat, I'm gonna break your face. <laughs> Come on! Yeah, that's right, baby. One-on-one -on -one with Charlie. Let's go, buddy. I think I'm scared of you, punk ass. Using kids, taking them hostage. Oh, it started snowing during the fight! I love that! I love that so much! Chop! Judo chop! <laughs> Whoop. He's got dodges. Look at him, guys. Okay. Not a bad move. Not bad. Ooh. There we go. 
Bringing out all the big guns here. The range on that stab armor is pretty nice, honestly. He's got health, though. Oh, how did he... He just blocked the mud spider with a punch. Fuck all that. What a pile of garbage. I gotta get that trained up. Alright. Stop landing that. I love how they look around like they can't see you. <laughs> Whoa, where'd he go? and T uh, Ming connected. Uh, uh, I don't know. What? Wait. I don't know if he's T Ming, but there's some Chinese big shot leaving here soon. Big shot? Yeah. They had me arrange a cruiser to take him out to a big ship offshore. What's his name? Uh, I don't know, but I hear he wears some silk robe thing with a dragon on it. Oh. Landy. He's still around here. Please, I beg you, don't tell anyone I told you. They'll kill me! I don't see how that's my problem. Rat-faced little bitch. Well, that's sort of a big revelation, guys. Landy is still around. He's still in the harbor. Find out more about the trade. Okay. Yeah, so that was Charlie's Revenge right there. Pretty long QTE sequence. And I think you can probably fail... Uh, like maybe like three of those QTE commands, but not the ones at the end. It's uh, the first time that they ever do that to you, and it just kind of pops up real unceremonious like, like, hey, there's actually two here on screen, and you have to choose the correct one. And that kind of foreshadows some stuff about Shenmue 2. Not precisely, but uh, they do evolve the formula a little bit in that game, guys. And it's, it's interesting. Also, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this, but some of the QTEs in this game actually make a lot of sense from, like, the gameplay perspective. In the sense that, um... Oh, no. Oh, why isn't this triggering? Oh, I'm, I'm sad. Excuse me. Eh? What is it, youngin? About the Mad Angels? I heard a rumor that you're still looking for them. Yes, I am. I heard that they are planning some deal. Do you know about it? The deal? Mm. I did hear something about some large-scale deal happening soon. Have you heard anything else? Well, I don't know none of the details. All right. I should go home. Oh, no, I shouldn't go home yet. Are you bullshitting me? Guys, he's supposed to be teaching us another move tonight. But instead, he's just sitting there. I don't know why this is happening. I don't know if I can fix it. I'm really upset right now. Just gonna reload the area, run back around here. No! Why is he just sitting there? Why is life like this? Damn it! Well, maybe we can still get it tomorrow. I'm honestly not 100% sure. It's a good move, too. It's really, really hard to pull off. But it's a good move. I'm going to be super sad if I don't get it. If I don't get it tomorrow, I guess I'll just describe it to you guys. <laughs> In the meantime, maybe a soda will make me feel better. No luck today. No luck whatsoever, guys. It's a bad luck day. It's a bad luck day for us. It's a bad luck day for us. Ooh. Capsule toys are giving dupes. Ah, good. Almost bum won't teach me moves. 
it's a bad luck day. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so what I was saying was, like, if you notice, a lot of the QTEs that we end up having to do actually make perfect sense with the controller layout. In the sense that, like, when we need to turn right to follow the dude on a motorcycle, the QTE button is right. Uh, when we kick the guy off the motorcycle, the QTE button was A, which corresponds to our kick moves when we're fighting. Same with, like, if you're doing something with your hand, it's usually the X button, because that's your hand moves. And once you realize that, and you start kind of, like, integrating that into what you're expecting with the QTEs, you can see a lot of them coming ahead of time. You're like, oh, I'm gonna have to hit A to jump over the shit that this dude just spilled, because... Because that corresponds directly to my leg moves, and I'm gonna jump with my legs. Or I'm gonna have to quickly turn left here to, like, go around this corner to follow this guy, so it's gonna be the left button prompt. It's not, like, 100% always like that, guys, but a lot of times it is. I would say, like, probably 95% of the time, there's a direct correspondence that you can kind of map to it. And I remember the first time I realized that, I was like, holy shit, this game has kind of been training me. Like, it all kind of ties together when you think about how the way that they describe the way to do a new move when you're being instructed on a new move and they're like, take a step back and then, you know, tense your arms. So, like, you know, back and the X button, because X is your hand moves. And you start to, like, associate that with the button. And then it, it comes into play with the QTEs as well. You're like, holy shit. That's, that was their vision for how, like, the player is not just playing a video game, but, like, really taking control of Ryo Hazuki with these, like, direct one-to-one -one mappings with everything he does and the way the controller is laid out. It's it's true across all systems, you know? Fighting, QTEs, free roaming. It's really cohesive. And I love it. Well, this has been kind of a garbage day from a luck perspective, guys. Maybe I should call a buddy of mine and see if he can make me feel better. Who haven't we called lately? Um... We could call... Now, Yuki, I suppose. Where's Ichiro's number? I thought his number was on here, too. Am I losing my mind again? I must be actually losing my mind. Okay. Three, seven, seven, four, nine. Not five. Back. I love that they make you dial this number every time with like the rotary way, but they also let you go back. It's like they wanted to make it tedious, but also let you correct your fuck up. <laughs> It's real. Yo, what's up? Nothing. And you? I'm tutoring Yasuo. He's really bad at math. I'm just trying to help him out. Okay. Brotherly love, huh? No, oh, man, it ain't like that. Well, later, man. Say hi for me. Yeah, later. Okay, I guess he's like totally out of unique conversations, so... <laughs> no more calling him. But also, we did get the big bomb drop from Nozomi today that she is moving to Canada, so maybe we should check in and see how she's doing, too. Gotta get to bed. Yeah, I'll get to bed in a second. First, I have to call Nozomi, wake her up, see how she's feeling. Apparently, I don't talk enough. So let's correct that. Hello? Nozomi? Yo, the photo is good, eh? Yeah, but I don't think you should come to the harbor. What? Why? The harbor's dangerous. It's alright. I'll avoid the bad parts. Don't come at all. Why not? I'm sorry. I shouldn't be rude. I know you're looking out for me. It's okay, but please stay away from the harbor. I understand. Ryo, stay out of trouble. I will. Well, you know, I don't think I ever heard that conversation before. Cool. Ryo does care, guys, even if he doesn't always know how to show it. All right. 
That's another day down, guys. When we come back, we will continue on. And, uh... I feel like we're getting a little closer every single day. A little closer to Landy. We know he's still around now. And that means we still have a chance for vengeance. Thanks as always, guys, and have a good night.